was a big hit. Oh yeah, that's a big one. There we go, guys. Oh yeah, second fish of the day, first bass. That's a giant right here. Biggest one I've caught out of here for sure. What a toad on the bronze eye popping frog. There we go, man. That's a solid, probably, you gotta be like three and a half pounds, probably. Big fish. It actually might be a female that was up in here shallow. That's a, that's a big one for this spot. Oh yeah, baby. That's what we're talking about. Just a few casts in with the frog. Um, I was fishing the drop shot off this pier right here, out in some deeper water, and then made my way to the left of that into some grass. Literally my first cast with the frog, we pick up that guy. So let me get out here. I'm gonna give her a toss just because of these weeds. So I'm gonna give her a toss out there. Make sure she gets back in that deeper water. There we go. That's what we're talking about. Man, that blow up kind of scared me a little bit. Shoo, caught me off guard. And the reason it caught me off guard is because I haven't really caught any big fish out of here yet. And that right there was definitely the biggest one I've caught out of here. And I wasn't sure if there was anything that size in here. And that confirms there sure is. And uh, what a way to start the day pretty much. Been out here 12 minutes. <laughs> Dang, dude. Came out here out of this muck. Absolutely destroyed the frog. And every time I throw my frog, there's a bunch of other frogs coming after it too. And I'm just waiting for another bass just to hit one of those. Because man... That bass absolutely destroyed mine. So yeah guys, I'm literally gonna walk down this stretch of bank here. There's like a little overflow over here, you know, where the lake drains when I think the water gets too high and stuff. So I'm literally just gonna make my way down. And after catching that big old bass, I will definitely be fishing this grass. Cause holy, that was... That was insane. So far, just one bass off this spot. I'm actually really surprised. I feel like I came across a spawning fish right there, but I'm not 100%. When the road looks Rough ahead, and you're miles from your nice warm bed. Just remember what your old pal said. You got a frog in you. Go ahead, blow up right here. This looks like it should be it. Nothing really happening here though. Caught a bluegill off the dock. I fished that drop shot out there for a little bit. We got a gill on the drop shot, but look at the size of this gill right here. Absolute giant gill. And I felt like I was just getting some bluegill bites, so I dipped out of that spot. Went to my left, fish that grass. First cast, I caught that bass. And worked this whole stretch of bank here. No other bites. I've only thrown the frog though. I do have another top water tied on. The drop shot like I said and I got a crankbait for these rocks over here if I can find a good spot where I'm able to crank but I'm not sure with all the grass how it'll go so we'll have to see but for now I'm still just targeting the frog too fun of a bite not to throw the frog around as much as I can honestly I mean, there's just frogs everywhere though. Frogs are everywhere. Almost heaven. 
West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River, younger than the mountains, blowing like a breeze, country road. Take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia. Mountain Mama Oh, someone else's fishing line. No! Come on, dude. That's actually... I didn't see it until just my lure got on it, and that's probably it for that. Yep. That sucks. Someone else's Dane fishing line. All right, well, I'm almost done with this stretch anyway. I will, uh, let me see if I can chuck, chuck a crankbait here a little bit. It doesn't look very friendly. And instead of wasting too much time here, nothing's really happening. Seems like a dead bank. I mean, this whole section has been dead with the baits I've been throwing besides the one fish. So let's go ahead and uh, move locations and maybe switch up our uh, rigs a little bit. Besides the frog, I'll keep that on just because of the grass. All right, let's make our way to spot number two. And it's another little pool of water by a bridge. So let's make our way over there. Kind of like another little running current little area. Let's see if we can find some little creek bass to get on the road again. I can't wait to get on the road again. Alright, here we are. I'm just taking a look here on this side. Looks pretty shallow right here. This is not the spot I saw when I was driving. It was just on the other side of me. But as you make your way back in there, that's where I was fishing the spillway. Back in these woods. Somewhere back in there. A little farther away away than where I'm at now from the main lake. So there's a spillway, runs into this nice creek over this bridge here. And this is a spot that looked like a nice deeper pool. Oh yeah. Look how calm and deep this looks right here. This looks really, really good. I think we're going to pull some fish out. It looks very good. Nothing wants my Helgramite. If there's anything here, they don't want this. My last kind of try is maybe under this tree limb and then maybe right underneath the bridge itself. Got one. Yes. Okay. I was going to say. It's got me in the grass down there. There we go. Yes. All right. There we go. I was going to say, man, if I couldn't get a fish, I was going to be very surprised. Off the Timu drop shot, Helgramite combo there. He's got a busted up lip right there. It looks like he's definitely been caught before he's busted up. But he's actually healthy besides that busted lip. Gorgeous looking fish. I was fishing this whole pool. Nothing happening. I fished in front of the tree, but I knew. I was like, man, if there's a fish in here, it's going to come right underneath that tree or right underneath the bridge. And sure enough, first cast under the tree, we get a nice LMB. All right, guys, let's go ahead and head up to spot number three. Spot number two didn't um, pan out as planned, but I finally squeezed out a largemouth bass from underneath that tree limb. I was actually really surprised in that little pool there that I didn't pull more largemouth bass out of that spot. When I drove up by and I was like, oh man, that looks really good. I got to go park and walk down and fish that spot. And I'm glad I got one bass out of it, but I was expecting a little more. So let's head to spot number three and let's see what we can pull out. Crazy the past couple times I've been here. Um, the pattern has been like different almost every day besides throwing a frog in grass because there's a lot of it. 
But other than that, the pattern has been pretty different every single day I've been out here so far, so. All right, at the new location here, as you can see behind me, this is a spot where there's a lot of flooded timber, a lot of fallen trees, lots of things like that. There are a ton of bluegills spawning in the back of this channel, or back of this cove, I should say, back here. I mean, there's a thousands of them back here. So I'm gonna try to target out maybe in front of those beds, and I'm gonna fish this timber and stuff, see if we can find any bass, you know, hiding underneath structure, and then see if we can find any off of the bluegill beds. You know, maybe like 10, 15 feet out from the bluegill beds, maybe just roaming around, you know, waiting to snatch a couple bluegill. So we'll go ahead, try the spot out, see what we can pull out. Well, as you can see, we're st we've still got a ton of rain. I mean, we just keep getting more thunderstorms, stuff like that. So anytime I come in uh, at this spot, it's always muddy. I'm gonna throw a little blue yell crank in here. Still fishing the same or same lake, same creek, just a different flowing point. Oh, there we go. Yep. Yep, I knew the crank would come in handy in some dirty water areas. Yes, sir. And during this, uh, oh, he's ice cold too because of the creek that flows in here. He's like super cold. He hit like right at the bank. Look how kind of white he is still because it's so cold back here. Let's get him back. Fishing a six cents crush. It's in like a warm mouth color. Great little color for dirty water and during the bluegill spawn. That's why I tied this guy on and I've been whipping it in my spots. I had a couple little followers and that was actually my first fish. And when I pulled up to the spot, I knew the first thing I was gonna throw in here was gonna be a crankbait, a dirty water color crank. Cause man, it's, it's so muddy in here. You guys seen from the last video, it was crystal clear. I was catching them on a PQ PQ on the Ned Head. Just ultra clear water. You can see all the boulders and stuff. And now it looks like I'm fishing the Mississippi River. <laughs> Other parts of the lake are pretty clear, but I'm thinking this side of the lake is definitely gonna be dirty by the looks of it. There's a fish. Another one, nice. At least they're still over here in this dirty water. Wasn't sure how it was gonna be. Oh yeah. Nice fish. There we go. There we go, second one off that sixth sense. A little bit bigger than that last one there. Solid catch, get him back. There's another one. Oh, he's barely hooked. I gotta get him up. There we go. Sometimes I can't play around with them too long. They're kind of swiping at it in this dirty water. Cause honestly, it's still, it's still probably hard to see, but they can definitely get a better look at it for sure. Basically right at my feet. And hey man, look at that beautiful fish. Nice, healthy, largemouth bass. Number three out of this spot fish off the bridge and uh, crank crank down these rocks right here. Seems like they're coming. There's one. Wow. First cast coming over this side. They're on these rocks holding to cover. Holding any kind of structure. Just snatching anything that comes by. Oh no! He's going to go back in the water right there. There he goes, he got off. About the same size as that other one right there. There's one. There's another one. Yes, sir. Nice. Oh, yeah. Let's go. There we 
go. Another one off that crank, man. They're loving it. And it's so crazy how much colder these guys are because they're hanging out next to this creek right here. Another one. Man. Holy cow, guys. There we go. And you guys can see they're actually getting the back hook every single time they're getting this back hook. And I mean, they're just barely getting it. They are definitely nipping at it. Definitely harder for them to see for sure. And it's definitely swimming by them and they're getting a reaction out of it. Honestly, they can see it, feel it, hear it. But even with that brighter color, they're still just getting the back end of that hook. So I'm trying to take it easy for a little bit on them, but I gotta try to land them pretty quick too, or else they will throw it. Keep good tension on these guys, and uh, you'll get them in. Another one. I can't believe how many are right here. I probably actually have a better chance right now catching them before um, now than when it was clearer water. It was probably actually a little tougher to catch some of these fish that are in here. Now that it's actually dirtied up, I'm probably actually getting a little bit better chance of catching some of these guys. That's a nicer one. There we go, another nice one, man. You know, those are probably, you know, round pound, pound and a half fish. They're good quality fish. Go ahead and get them back in the water. There's one. Wow. That's a little guy right there. Much, much smaller. There we go. Another one. Holy moly. This is unreal. I mean, 90% of them guys, back hook right there. Back travel, that's actually a nice one. Fat, healthy, good looking fish. Down you go. Another one. No way. Oh, that's a nice one, I think, right there. Yeah, that's a nice one. That's the biggest one out of this spot. Yeah, that's a nicer one. Yeah, there we go. Much nicer fish there. Beautiful. There's one. He's fighting good and staying down. Here we go. Dude, that's pretty unreal, guys. I can't believe it. <laughs> Holy cow. That's what I'm talking about. Here we go, man. Six cents. That war mouth color, that bluegill pattern. Absolutely killer. There's one. Golly. Oh, he came off. That's all right. 
I mean, heck. Now we're gonna see if we can do the same thing in this little canal. There's not rock, I don't think, like there was right here, but. There's a fish. We got one. Swimming kind of at me here. Here we go. Man. Woohoo! Killing it. We're killing it, guys. There we go. Another one to the crankbait. All right guys, spot number four was actually insane, better than I was ever expecting. I drove down here, saw the muddy water, and um, I literally just um, threw the crankbait. And um, if that was gonna work, I was gonna try like a chatterbait or something, but the crankbait ended up doing the trick and it just like killed a crap load of bass just now in here for about 20 minutes. They were just biting like crazy. So finally wiped them out of there. I moved my way up the creek a little bit or like this uh, little channel. Ended up getting too shallow for the crankbait, and I really didn't see much else going on. So let's go ahead and head to our spot number five, I do believe. I'm gonna finish off with the frog, and then I put a half ounce weight on this rod here with a pit boss. And I figured I might, you know, I'm gonna throw the frog around and I might, if I get a blow up or something, I'll follow up with this. And then I also want to just throw it in some patches of grass and see maybe, maybe if I can just pull out some bass that way. If I see some good, uh, good pieces of grass to do that on. There's a bite. That was my first little bite in a while. Let me see if I can get in there with the pit boss. I'm actually going to cast out a little bit in front there. Had him. Got him, baby. There we go. That was sick. All right. And the good old classic pit boss right there. Saw a little fish. Just pitching on some of this grass here. The bite is slowed way down. I figured I'd, I gotta switch up something. I brought the frog with me just to bring it with. Get this guy back. Um, figured I gotta switch something up now. I've been trying a couple different style baits and uh, this is one thing I haven't done out here yet and with there being a lot of grass I knew it would be something something I could play around with and there is our first one not big at all but it has been like an hour or so maybe even a little longer since I've gotten a bite so that felt pretty good this is just loose grass here just slop and stuff that I'm pitching into.
All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Mad Matt Fishing. Appreciate you guys watching. Super fun day out here. The bite has really slowed down. Um, I ended up at the very end fishing, you know, um, a half ounce weight with that pit boss pitching around some grass. I only caught that one fish, so it wasn't really a pattern right there at the end. I just happened to come across a bass. I was hungry enough to eat it, I think. But I think the bass bite has definitely kind of froze up for now. It might turn back on later, but um, that's going to do it for today. Smash that like, drop the comments below. Appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you guys very soon. Peace!